welcome to RF Transceiver Design course. In last uh, two three classes, we are discussing about the power amplifier design. So, if you see the uh, up to now whatever uh, design that we have seen, we have started from the amplifier design, low noise amplifier design, then uh, uh, mixer design, oscillator design, and power amplifier design. Now, one of the important block of the RF transceiver design is a phase locked loop, which is a widely used in uh, RF transceiver design. Uh, now, in uh, two three classes, we will try to uh, discuss the basic of uh, phase locked loop and uh, basic type of the PLL design. Uh, if you are interested more to study further, there are separate courses are available on the phase lock loop. So, let us discuss the basic of the uh, phase lock loop. So, if we uh, try to see the phase lock loops uh, basic parameter, then uh, it, uh, it can be classified order and type. There are different kind of uh, types of basic PLL are available type 1 and type 2. So, in uh, this uh, two, three lectures, we will try to understand what are the different type of the PLLs. Uh, then uh, one of the important parameter is the frequency range. So, uh, at what frequency range PLL works and it has a different, uh, uh, different kind of hold in range for uh, tracking the uh, tra means how the frequency it tracks and it has a, a pull in range for uh, capturing and uh, doing the acquisition of the signal and it has also lock in range. So, there are different kind of frequency ranges that is important for the PLLs. Uh, another important parameter is the loop bandwidth that is also important for uh, PLL because this is going to define the uh, overall PLL speed and uh, the third point is the phase noise. Uh, phase noise mostly depend upon the uh, VCO that we are going to use, VCO phase noise and that phase noise can uh, be improved by uh, making the, st uh, by adding the complete stability in the PLL. So, uh, phase noise is also very uh, important parameter for the uh, PLL. Then uh, transient response. So, if you see that uh, there is a overshoot and undershoot occurs because there is a feedback loop in the system and that might uh, change the transient response of the PLL output. Uh, that is also very important. Then steady steady state uh, uh, errors like uh, phase or uh, timing error there is a steady state error uh, also is important and uh, basic parameters like uh, how much power consumption supply voltage output amplitude that is also important and the last point that is a spectrum purity at the output because if there is a uh, change uh, whatever voltage variation at VCO that we are getting, it might change the si sideband in the output. So, it might add the sideband and that will uh, change the spectrum purity. So, uh, these are the basic parameters that is uh, important for phase lock loop. Uh, in this uh, lectures, we will try to discuss uh, type 1 and type 2 basic PLL and uh, what are the basic uh, uh, block diagram of type 1 and type 2 and transfer function of the type 1 and type 2 PLL. So, let us uh, discuss the uh, basic of the PLL. So, the first uh, thing in the PLL uh, design is a phase detection. So, uh, there are two uh, signal with a, a similar uh, frequency x1 t and x2 t and there is a change in the phase which is given by delta phi. So, here in the plot there is a x1 t and x2 t and there is a t 
difference delta phi. So, this x 1 t and x 2 t is applied to the phase detector and what phase detector should do? The output is a function of the change in this phase. So, this if this phase is more than output will be uh, high, if the phase difference is less then the output will be low. So, a uh, phase detector uh, is a circuit that senses a two periodic inputs and produce an output uh, whose average value is a proportional to the difference between the phases of the input the x 1 t and x 2 t. The input output characteristics of the phase, de uh, phase detector is ideally a straight line and its slope uh, is called the gain and it can be denoted by k p d because uh, p d is a uh, phase detector. So, uh, this is a uh, how we can uh, detect the phase. Now, there is a possibility that uh, the frequency is a uh, different for x 1 t and x 2 t two frequencies are there and uh, there is a fast change in the phase and what will happen that due to the fast change in the phase, uh, if you see the x out it is also the phase change is uh, uh, varied too much and the average value which is denoted by this dotted line will remain a constant. So, uh, it cannot properly detect the phase. So, one of the condition for the initial uh, type 1 kind of PLL is to have a uh, same frequency, uh, otherwise it cannot detect the phase. So, how can we implement this phase detector? So, simple example of phase detector that we can implement is a x or gate. So, uh, as, uh, as x 1 t and x 2 t is applied to the x or gate, then uh, if you see the at output x out t, you just get the pulse if uh, there is a change in the either 1 and 0, if there is a change in the amplitude. So, during that time only you will get the output otherwise you will get a either 1 1 or 0 0, it is a uh, same 0 output. So, this uh, exclusive OR gate is a ba very basic uh, uh, phase detector. So, here what we seek a circuit whose average output is proportional to the input of phase difference and exclusive OR gate uh, can serve this uh, purpose and it generates pulses whose width is a equal to delta phi as shown in this figure. So, uh, we will uh, try to go with the type 1 PLL and uh, in the type 1 PLL uh, alignments of uh, VCO phase. So, uh, this is the ideal reference clock and uh, this is a VCO output. So, uh, what is happening that uh, initially uh, there is a uh, same, same signal which is applied. Now, after some point of time at uh, t is equal to 0, there is a change in the phase. Now, this change of the frequency here uh, allow the VCO to accumulate phase faster than the references so that the phase error vanishes and change the frequency back to its initial value. So, how, how this works? Uh, here, you can see that uh, this uh, ideal reference voltage and VCO output has a different phase. Now, because of that what is happening that it will constantly V control will increase T0 to T1 and accordingly it will also change the frequency of the actual signal uh, VCO output and after a certain point of time it will remain a constant. So, this is how the type 1 PLL work. Uh, simple PLL and uh, loop filter. So, uh, in simple PLL what we need to do is we need to detect the phase uh, difference. Uh, so, this is the ideal reference clock 
and then this is the output voltage of the VCO. Now, uh, this ideal reference and this phase will be uh, compared and if there is a phase difference, it will generate the pulses. Now, according to this pulse, uh, what will happen if we give directly this pulse to the VCO, it will have a random change in the uh, voltage because this uh, VCO has a linear relation with the uh, frequency. So, it input voltage and uh, frequency has a linear relation. So, now if we want to make this pulse to the uh, voltage conversion, then we need a low pass filter where this low pass filter will uh, as this pulse is applied, there is a control voltage which is a constant will be given to the VCO. So, you need a loop filter in between to the phase detector and a VCO. So, here ne negative feedback loop, if the loop gain is sufficiently high, the circuit minimizes the output error. So, we, we need to have a loop gain of the complete loop should be high so that uh, uh, we can have a minim minimum error and the phase detector produces a repetitive pulse at its output and modulating the VCO frequency and generating a large sideband. So, we need to interpose a low pass filter between the phase detector and the VCO to suppress these pulses. So, low pass filter is a uh, uh, must re in order to uh, remove the uh, unwanted uh, large sidebands. Now, uh, if we try to see the analogy with the basic uh, voltage amplifier, which is a, a simple uh, amplifier which is shown in the left with the uh, unity gain feedback. So, this is uh, whatever input will be same will be the output. So, that we can also compare with the PLL. Now, we in the uh, unity gain feedback uh, of M circuit, whatever input voltage you give, same output you voltage you will get. Similarly, in the uh, PLL, whatever uh, input uh, phase that you have given and then output phase, uh, it is going to input and output both should be, uh, both phase should be constant. So, the if we try to uh, see in terms of equation, your output phase minus input phase equal to constant. So, if we take a differentiation of this, it is d phi out by dt with d phi in by dt. So, output phase uh, change is equal to the input phase change. So, here we say the loop is locked if our output phase is uh, minus input phase is a constant with the time. So, the, this should be constant and an important and unique consequence of phase locking is that the input and output frequency of PLL are exactly equal. So, if that is a basic of type 1 PLL that uh, the means your frequency should be uh, frequency of input and output is a equal frequency. So, if we try to analyze a simple PLL, this is a uh, response of the uh, VCO which is output frequency by the V control. So, for different voltage V1 or V2, we will get a different frequency omega 1, omega 2. And this is for fa phase detector. For different delta phase, you will get a different voltage V1. So, input voltage is given to the uh, XOR gate and it will generate the VPD. So, this is the input voltage and there is a uh, phase change output voltage. So, this delta phi 1 is a difference between input voltage and output voltage. So, this is a phase difference between input and output. So, what will happen that VPD will look like this where uh, due to there is a 1 0, uh, it will get the 1. So, you will have a continuous pulse like this. You need a RC filter R1 uh, uh, low pass filter to make the 
constant voltage with uh, respect to this repel voltage and it will be supplied to the voltage control oscillator. We have already seen this VCO voltage control oscillator uh, while we discussed the VCO in the oscillators. So, as as we change uh, the this oscillator uh, it will uh, as we change the control voltage it will accordingly increase or decrease the uh, frequency and uh, our input will be input phase and the whatever reference uh, reference phase will be compared and we get a constant uh, vpd uh, at at the constant VPD it will be locked. So, here if the loop is locked the input and output frequencies are equal and the PD generates uh, repetitive pulses and the loop filter extracts the average level and VCO senses this level so as to operate at a required frequency. So, if the frequency will go up or down accordingly this V control voltage will change and the frequency will change. And when there is a input and output frequency are equal, there is a constant uh, uh, pulse and the average will remain same. So, V control voltage will remain same. So, uh, example of a phase error, if the input frequency changes by delta omega, so here input frequency, how much is the change in the phase error? assume the loop remain locked. Now, if the here in this case, if input frequency is uh, changing by delta omega, uh, as shown in the above figure, uh, such a change requires a V control change by a delta omega by KVCO. So, this is a delta omega, the difference is delta omega and this is a KVCO which is a slope this in turn necessity a phase error. So, delta phi 2 minus delta phi 1 which is equal to delta omega by k VCO into k PD. So, the phase error delta phi 2 minus delta phi 1 is given by a delta omega by k VCO that is a uh, V control change by a delta omega by k VCO into uh, KVCO will be multiplied with the KPT. So, the key observation here is that the phase error varies with the frequency. So, this, this will vary with the frequency delta omega and to minimize the variation uh, what we need is a we need to maximize the KPD and KVCO so that delta phi 2 by delta phi 1 equal to uh, its uh, value will not depend upon the uh, variation in the delta omega. So, this quantity uh, is called a loop gain even though it is not a dimension less. So, this is a uh, loop gain of the uh, PLL. Now, uh, response of a PLL to the input frequency step. So, if if we try to change the, this is omega 1 frequency and this is uh, this is input frequency and this is output frequency and as uh, omega 2 which is omega 1 plus delta omega. So, what is happening initially there is a no change. So, there is a constant pulse and then after certain period of time there is a change in the uh, change in the pulse. So, your V control voltage is uh, started increasing and then again the, the frequency is changing high. So, this V control voltage is uh, changing and this uh, will start increasing the uh, frequency. So, similarly uh, this omega out is also increasing. After certain point of time if you see the T1 uh, at T1, it will start uh, comparing with the V input frequency and then again it will start reducing the frequency or at uh, after certain point of time when the both frequency are equal, you will have a 
constant uh, output and this difference between this uh, actual required uh, v control and what we are getting that difference is given by delta omega by k v c o so the loop locks only after two conditions are satisfied what is that when your omega out becomes equal to omega in and the difference between phi in and phi out settles to its uh, proper value so if this both condition satisfies then only the loop will be settled we can also uh, do the fsk demodulation so we can also use the pll for the demodulation as shown in the figure so the input frequency here toggled between two values so does the output frequency and the control voltage must be also toggled between these two value so what will happen that initially control voltage is uh, high and then uh, frequency is changing control voltage is a uh, low so it will able to add the control voltage that we are getting what we will get is a uh, whatever pulse which is a transmitted uh, that will directly we we get by the control voltage so the frequency modulated signal uh, the, we can use a demodulator by just uh, applying the signal v in to the uh, v in uh, to uh, the pl so uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, uh, we we might think that uh, pll is no longer than a uh, it is just a wire because the input frequency and output frequency is remaining same but having uh, if we uh, carefully followed the uh, our student uh, student reason that except for fsk demodulate application a pll is no better than a wire since it attempts to make the input and output frequency phase equal so what is a uh, uh, wrong in the student thinking this uh, wrong is that uh, we can observe that the dynamics of the loop can yield interesting and useful property suppose uh, the input frequency toggles at relatively high rate leaving a little time for the pll to keep up at each input frequency jump the control voltage begins to change in the opposite direction but does not have a enough time to settle uh, in other words the output frequency uh, excursion are uh, smaller than the input frequency jumps so the loop does perform a low pass filtering on the input frequency variation just as the unity gain buffer perform low pass filtering on the input voltage variation if the output op amp has a limited bandwidth so in fact many application incorporate pll to reduce the frequency or phase noise of a signal by means of the this low pass filtering property so that is why uh, pll is not only uh, just a wire it is also uh, helping to improve the phase uh, uh, or uh, noise phase noise in the uh, system so it is one kind of uh, low pass filtering that we are uh, applying property so uh, the meaning of a transfer function in a phase domain we we na now try to derive the transfer function here what is happening that uh, there is a two analogy is given one is a op amp and another is a pll now in op amp if there is a uh, fast change in the signal is happening then its amplitude is a uh, reduced so here you can see the amplitude is reduced if there is a uh, constant uh, voltage means uh, it if it is not fast changing then it is following the input so the transfer function of voltage domain circuit signifies how sinusoidal voltage propagates to the output and in the transfer function of pll must reveal how a slow or fast change in the input uh, phase propagates to the output so here there is a same example for a slow phase change 
and the fast phase change is given. So, how it will adapt your PLL, how it will adapt. So, if we try to find out the transfer function of the PLL, so this is a input phase 5 in and this is a output phase 5 out. So, the uh, if we try to use the difference, if we the difference between this is 5 in minus 5 out. So, if we want to find 5 out by 5 in the open loop transfer function, so the open loop is a KPD by because there is a low pass filter R1 C1 uh, 1 uh, 1 by 1 plus R1 C1 S into we already have derived for VCO K VCO by S. So, the transfer function HS is given by 5 out by 5 in into S equal to uh, K P D by K V C O divided by R 1 C 1 S square plus S K P D into K V C O. So, if we if we see this transfer function the open loop uh, transfer function this open loop transfer function contains a one pole at the origin that is a uh, R 1 C 1. And that is why this kind of uh, PLL is called a type 1 PLL. And if we have a slow input phase variation where S is equal to 0, if we consider S is equal to 0 in this, our transfer function will equal to 1. So, uh, this kind of PLL will uh, work for a slow input phase variation. If there is a large variation, this will not work. Now, this transfer function, the closed loop transfer function, if we try to compare with the uh, HS means uh, that is uh, any system with the uh, uh, transfer function uh, HS equal to omega n not uh, omega n square by S square by 2 psi omega n S plus omega n square. So, we will get a damping factor and a natural frequency for the system. So, uh, this uh, system uh, for this PLL, the uh, damping factor which is 1 of omega low pass filter frequency by K P D into K V C O and your natural frequency is given by K P D K V C O into omega of low pass filter. So, you need to have a damping factor which is equal to root 2 by 2 or a larger. So, as to provide a well behaved means critically damped or a over damped response. And your here omega low pass filter is equal to 1 by R1 into C1. So, here we can see that xi is a inversely proportional to K V C O. Now, if we try to plot the open loop transfer function, this is a Bode plot of the open loop transfer function. Then, uh, if we try to increase the uh, K V C O, what is happening that uh, its phase margin is decreasing. So, that will lead to instability uh, in the system. So, uh, that is one of the drawback of this kind of V C O. So, the behavior of open loop transfer function H open for a two different values of K V C O. As KVCO increases, the unit gain frequency rises and thus reducing the phase margin. So, here uh, two addition for uh, loop, loop dynamics since a linear and time invariant operation relates to phase and frequency, the equation below uh, how does we ensure the feedback of previous simple pillar impl implementation is a negative. Uh, it is obvious that uh, the phase detector provides uh, both negative and positive gain, thus the loop automatically locks with the negative feedback. Now, if our input frequency is different than the output frequency, we can also use the frequency multiplication. The way we do in the, uh, when we want to have the voltage gain in op amp, we use a feedback. So, here the input and output has a, we use a R1 and R2 and we vary R1 and R2 such that we get a different gain. So, similarly, 
what do we do in the uh, uh, in the PLL is we use a uh, we provide an input frequency omega in there is a phase detector and the in order to have if omega out frequency is high then we use a let us say divide by 2 that is a divider. So, the if the input frequency is 1 gigahertz and output frequency is 2 gigahertz that 2 gigahertz is divided by 2 and the same frequency will be provided at the phase detector. So, uh, this uh, method uh, is called uh, dividing uh, frequency multiplication in the PLL and here divided by m circuit is counter that generates one output pulse for every m input uh, pulses and this divide ratio m is called a modulus. So, we, we can add a different modulus to have a different output frequency. So, what is the drawback what uh, we have seen in simple PLL? So, the first is a there is a tight relation between a loop stability and the corner frequency that is uh, 1 by R1 C1 of the low pass filter and ripple on the control line uh, modulate the VCO frequency and must be suppressed by choosing a low value of omega low pass filter. So, if we have a low value it will lead to a less stable loop because uh, the psi is uh, directly depend upon the omega low pass filter. Second is that the simple PLL suffers from a limited acquisition range and uh, if uh, VCO frequency and input frequency are very different at the startup, there is a problem uh, loop may never acquire a lock, there is a not possibility of a locking. In addition, the finite static phase error and its variation with the input frequency also prove a undesirable in some application. So, this uh, because of this drawback, we need to uh, uh, go to the another kind of PLL. So, the second point if we try to address, then we will try to see that how the first point can also be addressed. So, in the second point, what is that? That if there is a change in the frequency at the start, startup. So, we already have detected the phase in the type 1 PLL. Now, if we want to detect the uh, frequency in the type 2 PLL, then uh, we need a phase frequency detector. We will discuss more about the uh, type 2 PLL in the uh, next class. Uh, this is uh, all about the type 1 PLL. Thank you.